my son Ben and I were working on um, transmission of energy as opposed to mechanical um, force. This is about transmission of energy. So mechanical production of force is I relax, so I relax my shoulder joint, other joints to just rest. And then I move from inside, meaning turn. You can imagine a ball that's turning inside or an expansion. Basically, it's a whole body movement that produces force, even if he's resisting, that produces force to allow you to move, to attack. So you can also yield, use it to yield, so he's attacking. My relaxing lets me support his force because it's going down through me into the ground instead of I'm trying to stop it here at the point of contact. And then I can just turn my body to, to yield to his force, turn my body to yield to his force. Rotate a joint like the shoulder joint to, to yield and then attack back. That's all um, very effective and to a large extent depends on how well you can relax or settle within yourself, not, not using muscle tension to fight or press at the point of contact, but letting go, relaxing, and then moving from inside. All of that is a, a very effective uh, mechanical way to produce force. But what we're doing today is something a little different, and it has to do with what I am calling transmission of energy. And that's where, instead of thinking about a mechanical process where my motion is affecting Ben, moving him away or moving him in another direction, I'm just remaining where I am in space. It doesn't matter. I could be in any position. It could be any example you, you want. And instead of thinking about how there's going to be external movement like that, or external movement that starts from the internal movement, uh, that feeling of moving inside, expanding, opening, turning, rotating, and then that transfers into external, which affects Ben. To develop transmission of energy, I'm focusing on staying where I am, meaning wherever my hand, my arm is, I'm just kind of let go. I'm content to leave it alone. It's fine the way it is. I don't have to make adjustments. I don't have to turn or move it or try to go somewhere. I just leave it alone. And now, and this is where it gets a little hard to explain, I'm, I want to transmit energy through me into him. Think of it like electricity. So instead of this external physical movement that affects him, there is a transmission of energy that shakes him. There's, there's a kind of like flipping a switch in my brain that sends energy through and into him. It sounds strange, perhaps it might seem a little bit contrived. And this is where uh, it always gets tricky to talk about because in reality, you have to feel it. It's not something you just observe and say, oh, I get what, what's happening here. When someone can do this, flip that switch and um, transmit energy. See how his, his body shakes? He goes away, but even if, he did, even if he didn't go backwards, like in that direction, it's, see, if you film his legs, See how he buckles in the middle? Uh, can you describe what that feels like? Um, more of a kind of shock feeling. Okay, and what effect does that shock feeling have on you, if any? So instead of like a force pushing, it's more of a uh, disruption or causing you to be unstable. Okay, so if he's attacking me and I do that, see how his, his body shakes, you see how he buckles? So it's not like I'm taking him as he attacks me and I'm trying to move his arm or his body and this kind of thing. I just need to touch him with that transmission of force and his body shakes. 
So for practical use, someone's attacking, and then we can follow up. Thank you. <laughs> um, in Chisau, normally we relax on each other like this, and we roll, we direct our energy, we try to disrupt each other's balance and, and uh, while staying connected to the uh, partner's center or spine. We feel how to yield with force, so if he's giving me sufficient energy, I turn it away and then come back. Um, and this is all very effective kung fu, and these yielding skills and, and mechanical um, production of force is, is very important to develop. Um, they too clearly depend to a large degree on the level of settling or relaxation. Um, but, but you can also, once you start to feel how to uh, trigger that transmission of force, you can introduce that in your chi cell if you wish. So maybe we start rolling, and at any point in time, it's just a transmission of force, and then you could follow up with an attack. Um, because that, that's more likely how you're going to be using it in practical um, situations. You know, you're not, if, if, once you're in contact in a situation, you're not going to um, uh, just roll around with someone to control them like that. Not in a real situation. Once you're in contact, it's just, and then, then you attack. Um, that's why he's buckling. His body went down. Be not because I forced him down, but because I transmitting my energy through myself into him, and it buckles him. And then, then you can take, take advantage of that. Can you describe the difference, if at all, in, in uh, power that's, that is affecting you in these different ways? Um, with the more subtle relaxation, it's more of a force that's pushing me around. Okay. Like I can feel where it's coming from. Okay. But with um, that kind of what you're calling transmission of energy, I don't feel where it comes from. So it just... You know, the first place I feel it is in my legs, not where we're touching. Okay, thank you. Um, so, however we're touching, okay, the important thing is, okay, fine, you're talking about transmission of energy, it's a little bit different, or in addition to the mechanical production of force. Um, but how do you train it? How do you feel it? How do you train it? How do you learn how to use it? These are the important questions that you don't find discussed very often. In, in my experience, anyway. And it's not an easy thing to, uh, to answer those questions. So I'll do the best I can. It starts, like everything else, by a level of relaxing. So you just need to tell yourself to let go. Not try to prepare yourself to move at all. Just wherever you are, you just be there. So whether I'm, I'm here and I just settle, or whether I'm here, I'm just content to be there. Whether, no matter what the position is, just here. So you'll notice that when I'm, when I'm here, when I settle, when I'm content to be where I am, you'll see everything just fall down, just rest. And Ben will tell you that he doesn't feel anything at the point of contact other than the fact that we're touching each other. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. That I'm not pushing him here. I'm not pushing him in any direction, down, to the side, up, forward. I'm just resting comfortably where I am. If all, if my entire body is settled that way, relaxed, the muscles, the joints, settled, um, then when he pushes me, the force can go down into the ground. That's why he doesn't feel me pushing back, but it's not affecting my balance either. Um, it's hard for you to see, but he's giving me quite a bit of force. Um, now, what you want to add to that is this. So we start with that level of relaxation, meaning be content to stay where you are. Then you go to, um, you need to open all your joints. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm opening them by rotating, by moving externally like this. Opening your joints means the condition of the joints, meaning inside the joint there's a separation. You can think of it as, this is separating. This is separating. Every joint is separating. But you, th this is the tricky part. You can't make it into a, a physical effort at you separating your joint, meaning 
moving it like this, moving it like that's rotating your joints, that's fine. But that doesn't mean they're in a condition of being open or separated within themselves. So how to open your joints is the question. The, uh, the best way that I have it, of, of saying how to do it is you form an idea in your mind, you tell yourself that you want them to have an open condition. And that's very much connected with relaxing the, the uh, feeling inside the joint. So it's just you give yourself a, a, a mental direction to say, I want my joints to be open. And then you let go. You release. And they will become open as a result of that mental process with a little practice. It's not something you can force. It's not something that is in the way we normally experience as control, where we move or we tense or we do something specific to make something happen. This is more a natural result of the mind's directive. Just relax, open. The, the importance of opening the joints is if, if my joints are not open and he presses on me, then there's a tension that goes into me that I am inclined to fight, push back, so I can equalize his force so his hand doesn't come in or I don't lose my balance. But if I relax sufficiently, but the joints are not open enough, then his force can go through me, through my joints, into a point inside of me, whether it's my shoulder or, okay, push a little bit more. When I relax better, now his force, I feel it in my shoulder blade. When I relax that, his force is in my lower back. Can you feel that, where your force is resting? Then I move from my lower back to affect him. So one advantage of relaxing, even if the joints aren't sufficiently open, is that the force goes through to a point inside me, and then you move from that point, and so you're not fighting his force at the point of contact. But if the joints are sufficiently open, and that how to do it, I'm just going to do it, and you might notice that my face takes on a certain look to it and it's almost like a looking inside. And you'll notice this whole area just kind of drops and settles by itself. Then when he pushes, harder, 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 I don't even feel his pressure, and I can pull. Because his force doesn't go through like a tunnel inside of me, through the, through the joints, to a place inside. The force doesn't get inside of me. It's stopped here at the point of contact, not because I'm forcing back. If I, if I force back, you can describe what he feels. What do you feel? What do you so, feel? Or just like a fight. Right, I feel where our hands touch. We're fighting, he could win, I could win, okay. But when I open my joints, then what do you feel? I'm like pushing on a wall. There. Can you feel where that force is going inside of me? No. Okay. Well, just like when you push on a wall, you can't feel the force go into the wall. It's just stopped at the surface. So when your joints are sufficiently open, you can sustain great force without being impacted by it, without it affecting you, which means you don't have to react. You don't have to make an adjustment in your condition, the condition of your joints, muscles, uh, you don't have to change position or angle. You don't have to tense anything to equalize force. You simply have the joints open. There's no place for the force to go. Um, uh, especially when you add to the open joints, and this is the next uh, level, um, focus. That means you're directing your mind's eye to where you want to go. It has nothing to do with them moving physically, externally. It's the joints are open through the mental directive of just opening them, having them open in that condition. And then you're kind of looking without going or pointing without moving. Think of it as every cell in your body is looking at him, but not moving, just looking, focusing. You can also think of it, same idea, as, thank you, as every cell in your body is a charged particle that's um, affected by magnetism. 
and he's, he's the magnet. So every cell in my body goes, mm -hmm, and points at him. It's not just, oh, I'm looking with my eyes. It's every cell is turned on and oriented to him. And then, and that's already having the joints in the open condition. Then what will happen is, when, when uh, that level of focus is turned on, then he feels something coming to him, an energy. There's no external motion. It's just a touch. I turn on that focus, and what do you feel? It's hard to describe. It's just like, like you said, an energy. Okay. Is there a direction to it? I mean, it's like coming towards you, but it's not like to a specific spot. Okay. And so you've got that energy that's already being transmitted. And then the next step is to increase or make that energy more um, effective by triggering it, by like flipping a switch. It's like making the electricity be stronger. And that, that's not an easy thing to describe how. For me, at this point, it's basically from here, from the back of the brain, just moving from there. Not trying to move, push my hand, not thinking of moving my whole body, even though you will observe that motion. It's more like a spasm. It's, it's just, that's triggered by the brain. Just kind of a, a transmission. I'm going to go and move that energy into him. And that's why you see it affecting his body. And I'm just turning it on by giving myself a directive to, to just trigger it like that. So regardless of the position, once I trigger that energy, then it, he can feel it in his legs. You can practice this any way you want. You can take every motion from Sunim Town. And he starts to press. And rather than press back, fight with muscle, just relax. Tell the joints to remain open. And start to trigger that part Turn on that electricity. See how it moves him? Or you can do it slower. He's still pressing. Press harder. And I just stay relaxed and move from that part of my brain. And you can see how he's moving. But I don't feel this pressure. It's not like I have to overcome anything. I'm just transferring energy through into him. And it's affecting him. So no matter how we're touching, I just send the energy. So this, this is... Um, my best way at this point to describe the transmission of energy. Um, practice, one of the key um, triggers, mental triggers to have to practice this is to start with this idea, and this is very important, of staying where you are. Don't try to move your hands in any direction. Wherever they are, that's fine. Just be happy with that. Relax, settle, and use your mind to move inside without a, um, without a, a, an external physical effort at moving externally. Um, basically, it's using the mind, using your awareness, but not as separate from the physical, as one with the physical. So I'm using my mind to trigger that energy, but that has a physical effect. It's not just, oh, I just imagine it. Now nothing's happening. He doesn't feel anything. Right? Mm -hmm. I have to imagine that moving, that triggering, that flipping the switch to turn on the electricity, if you will. And then I have to let that simultaneously kind of like shake me from inside. And that's the effect you see. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.